this segment, we're going to be talking about aeronautical decision making, and more importantly as part of it, making the go or no go decision. So essentially what I'm gonna do is break down the PAVE checklist. The PAVE checklist is a very popular checklist used to help you make that go or no go decision based on a number of factors. So going through it, you have the P for pilot, the A for aircraft, the V, I know they throw this one in here, environment, and then the E for external pressures. All right, so let's start with the pilot. Some things we need to think about um, ourselves and making sure that we are ready to go in the air. So a popular checklist or sub checklist as part of that is the I'm safe checklist. We're gonna go through that. So you can see here, I'm safe checklist. The first thing is illness. All right, so you don't wanna be going flying if you're not feeling well. Small things on the ground can become big things in the air. So thinking, oh, I just have a headache, I'm going to take some Tylenol, hint, hint, medication is coming up, right? Um, what if the medication wears off, right? What if you didn't bring your extra Tylenol with you? That small little headache is going to cause a lot of distraction in the air. So think about that. When we talk about illness and medication, it's not just, ooh, do I have this disease or am I taking any of the forbidden drugs that the FAA specifies, right? It's more than that. Anything that you're taking, anything that could affect you in the air. So illness and subsequently any medication you're taking, right? The S is stress. Do you have any stressful things going on, right? This doesn't have to be aviation related. It could be something at home. It could be a homework assignment at school that's stressing you out, right? So anything, again, that's getting your mind off from the aircraft and the safety of flight, you might want to consider not going flying. Alcohol, right? If you've been drinking, I know we like to say eight hours ball the throttle, you might want to extend that. Alcohol affects everyone differently. Um, so consider when's the last time you had a drink, if you had a drink at all, and um, maybe push the flight back if you're feeling a little off or uh, you just think it's not safe. Uh, the F, fatigue. So fatigue meaning Tiredness. When's the last time you slept? How long did you sleep, right? If a pilot is tired, they're going to be behaving differently, right? They could be falling behind the aircraft in general, have a loss of situational awareness, um, easily get task saturated. So sleep can be just as bad, if not worse, than uh, being under the influence of alcohol while you're in the plane. And the last one, emotion. I know some older renditions of this have eating. While eating is important, the FAA has since updated and changed it to emotion. Uh, sort of think of it as playing into the stress portion, right? Our emotions can cause stress, death of a family member, breaking up a relationship, anything that's uh, got your mind taken away from flying the plane. All right, so after you have gone through your I'm safe checklist and everything seems good, right? You're gonna check mark that off and then move over to our next section here. So documents, what are the required documents? You need to make sure you have your pilot certificate, whether that's your student pilot certificate with your endorsement or it's your private or it's your private with an instrument rating add-on, commercial, etc., etc. The medical, at the private pilot level, you need a minimum of a third class, right? Under 40, this lasts for 60 calendar months. At the commercial level, if you are doing a commercial operation, you need to have at least a second class, and under 40, that second class privilege, commercial privileges, is only good for 12 calendar months. So that's a big gap between the 60 and the 12. So you're gonna make sure you're staying on top of it. And of course, as we all know, our pilot certificate does not have a government or does not have a photo, so you need to have a government issued photo ID to go along with it. Your Vaughn ID will not count, so make sure you have a driver's license, a passport, and make sure it's not expired. All of that's good. 
can you move over? Currency, right? Have you had a flight review in the last 24 calendar months? If you have, have you done three takeoffs and landings in the last 90 days in the same category class of aircraft? If you're flying at night, were those landings to a full stop and at night? If you're instrument rated and you're going into instrument conditions, have you done your six hit currency? Or do you need an IPC? Where are you with that? When's the last time you shot an approach? Check your logbook, right? And then of course, any personal minimums, right? Different things that are going on during the day. When the, when's the last time I've flown, not for currency, but for myself? What makes me feel safe? What about the location that you're renting from? That's going to, uh, probably have a time limit on there as well to expand upon the regs. The regs are bare minimums. You want to expand the safety and practice a good safety culture in making sure that you are ready to go fly.